Hello everybody, my name is HardyTechAreo and welcome back to the Butterfree Pokemon Y solo run. Today is a very special episode as we are going to be having an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the one and only Blue the Fox, the guest star of the ninth, I believe, episode of the Pokemon Y Butterfree solo run. And thank you to everybody for pointing out that you can't actually skip this trainer. But I'm not going to, because this trainer has become the bane of my existence, and I'm going to have to beat him eventually. But yes, we have Blue with us today. Uh, in the last episode, Blue took over for a while, playing for nearly 20 minutes, making a lot of great progress. It's had really, really good reviews on that episode. Many, many people really enjoyed it, so I thought, why not have um, a return? And also, I did go and get Geek Drain on Butterfree. If you, those of you think it's over... Okay, you did... <sighs> That's a 2% chance of me missing that. At least he didn't go for Rock Blast, which, I mean, I guess I have to try to see the plus side of that, right? But I have been completely rude. I've been a very bad host. Blue, please say hello to everybody. Oh my god, you're always the jokester, you know that? Oh, man, I can already tell this is going to be a great time. So, uh, Blue, you did make your debut. You have been appearing in the background of my videos for quite a while, and you ended up actually making your official debut here a few videos ago, or um, in the last video as you took over for me because I just was not in a, a good mental state to actually record uh, after what this game had put me through. So I want to thank you very much for doing that, for taking the time to, uh, out of your busy schedule of sitting on my bed all day, uh, just taking the time to come take over for that, give me a break, entertain the people. A lot of people really, really did enjoy you, but I think they want to hear your thoughts on the experience. So, Blue, I'm going to give you the floor here for a second. Just tell them, tell them how you felt about being here and entertaining them for the first time. How it felt. Uh, were you nervous? Were you scared? Were you just happy? Did the adrenaline just keep you going? Tell us, man. You got We got to let. We got to know what was it like. That's completely understandable, you know. Really? Really? See, that's like a complete opposite reaction of what I had when I started making videos. So, it's just, it kind of surprised me, because you don't seem very camera shy the way you've just kind of been in the background for a while now. But, um, you know, I guess to each his own, sitting in the background and actually having to perform are completely different things. No, see, that's something I understand completely. A lot of people send me questions asking for advice. Like, hey, you know, I'm new to YouTube. Um, like, how do you do it? What do you talk about? Like, they want advice like that. And I, I just never really know what to say because for me, it literally all just comes naturally. Like, um, I just, I just know what to do. It's just... It just, ram it just rambles out of my mouth. It's completely different when I am in person. I mean, besides you, you know, we're, we're besties. But, um... It's, it's completely weird when I'm around other people, I freeze up, but when I'm by myself, I can just talk just fine. You see, I've just, I never got that vibe from you before, so it just really, it catches me off guard that you felt that way, but I'm also glad that I could help you come out of your shell a bit, you know, and, and experience something new, and, and that makes me really happy to know that I did like, have that impact on your life and uh, you do feel a lot more confident now. I think that's really, really cool. <laughs> Man, I didn't know you had such a humor. <sighs> so Blue, moving on to the topic of Pokemon because this is obviously a Pokemon video. Uh, you know quite a bit about it. In the last episode, when in the description you were saying your favorite Pokemon is Ninetales. Does that have anything to do with the fact that it's a fox? Oh, okay, 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 I'm gonna cut you off there, because I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to say that kind of stuff. Like, there's there's kids watching these videos, man. You gotta keep that in mind, alright? Just saying, like, I know I've, I've said some pretty weird stuff before, but... I, did you see that? Did you see that? We put it to sleep, it immediately wakes up and puts us to sleep. That is wrong. If we don't wake up on this first turn and put this thing to sleep, I'm gonna start assuming there's something a little suspicious going on. I don't even have any any kind of awakenings, either. 
that's that's really unfortunate. And how much Giga Drain do I have? Oh, I, I didn't realize Giga Drain got up to uh, 6 PP now. That's really useful. I also just realized Struggle Bug is actually super effective because a lot of people have been pointing out often that um, Rock doesn't resist Bug, and Bug doesn't resist Bug either, which are things I do often forget. Uh, you know, I'm not great at remembering type resistances. How have you been with types? I mean, um... I've always been good at offensiveness, but d defensiveness, uh, like the resistances, are one thing I've always had trouble with for some reason. Well, I mean, that's completely understandable that you would feel that way. Um, I mean, yes, you are a fox, obviously, but <laughs> I assume it is rather hard for you to remember things when you can't actually read. But I, I've actually known a lot of people, like, I've talked to people before who play the Pokemon games, uh, who started playing the games before they actually knew how to read. Like, I had one friend specifically who uh, started playing Pokemon Red and Blue before she knew how to read, and um, she got completely stumped at, she never made it past Lieutenant Surge's gym, because she couldn't figure out how to get past the gym, because she didn't know what the boxes were saying when you'd click on it and say, oh, it's not in this one, or you'd click on it and say, yes, it is in this one, I bet the other switch is nearby. Um, so she never got past that until she actually started reading, but that didn't really seem to stop you because a lot of people were saying that you played very, very well in that last episode. Good point, good point. Um, but yeah, so, uh, did you know Raghorn didn't have Sturdy? I would have swore that thing had sturdy, that's why I went for sleep powder. See, I feel like if you were playing, that's not really a thing you would have thought about, because you would have you would have known these things. And I think that's what separates you and me, is that for the most part, you could actually think through a lot of these decisions, and uh, when I'm commentating, for me, I don't think nearly as much about the gameplay, and it oftentimes makes me come off as a bad gamer, and while I'm not exactly great at Pokemon, um, I do feel like... The commentating does make me seem like a lot worse than I really am. And and everything wakes up immediately. Do you know why everything wakes up, though? Because you and me are a fantastic combination, and nobody wants to miss it. Okay? That's it. Oh, oh, see, speaking of missing things, he does want to miss it. He does want to kill us, because that would bring an end to our wonderful journey. And he went for Tackle. Why? Because he doesn't want to kill us. That is a loyal fan. He woke up. He was so... His, his actions of waking up, of showing us his love for us, absolutely stunning to the point of it paralyzed us, of complete shock. It was quite wonderful. This Onyx is a little bit scary though, I think Onyx does get sturdy. I just assume every rock type gets sturdy, but I'm assuming these are things you actually do know. And it went for Bind, why? Because they don't want to kill us. You just, you have to appreciate that kind of dedication to a viewer base. But I wanna, so, we're about to be taken on the gym. And this is probably going to be the hardest fight we've had in this entire game so far. It could theoretically be the hardest fight we'll face in this entire game. And going into this, I'd love to know, what would your strategy be? Really? Really? Okay. I don't really know if I would have ever, like, considered taking that path with this battle. Um... It's definitely something to consider. As far as strategies go, I, I can't really argue against that. It is very unorthodox. It could... Hey, hi. I'm just going to leave now because we are going to go take a uh, quick stop at the Pokemon Center. But, um, strategy is very unorthodox. And that's, that's something I do like to do a lot of times is I've always enjoyed um, trying things that are a little abnormal, you know? Like, it's, it's never any fun when you're super generic. I've always had a really good time when, uh, you know, you mix things up. So, you know, make him a little spicy, I guess, even though I actually don't like spicy foods. Do you like spicy foods? Oh, you don't know what spicy means. I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, that was probably really rude of me to assume you do. I mean, you, you are a fox after all. I sometimes don't think these things through. Uh, I mean, I'm not even good at talking to other people. I mean, this is the first time I've ever interviewed a stuffed animal before, so... Although, I mean, we do have a lot of conversations. I mean, it, when it gets to the point where I, like, snuggle you every night as I fall asleep, um, you think we'd be pretty close, and I've, I I feel this awkward around you, but I just... This is a big moment for me, okay? I don't really think you... Like, I know this is, this is probably very stressful for you, obviously. Um, I mean, you just had your very first video, and already you're getting interviewed by one of the greatest YouTubers of all time. And um, I can understand, like, that's probably really stressful. But for me, 
um, I, I feel like I'm interviewing someone that's like on a completely different level than me. In a good way, I should say. In a good way. Like, you're... I think... Like, I, I oftentimes lose motivation um, in, in just pretty much everything. Like, no matter what I do, as far as, like, YouTube or, or life in general, there's always times when I start doubting myself and I start to lose motivation. And in being completely honest, that video you did yesterday, I feel like it lit a fire underneath me. I feel... Like, I had to step up my game after seeing that, and I need to thank you for that. So it is truly an honor for me to be interviewing you, okay? You are what I would consider to be one of my best friends I've ever had, and I don't know. I just, I feel like, thank you. Thank you for coming here and being with me, supporting me as I'm about to take on this extremely, extremely tough battle. Thank you, boy. But now, um, any final thoughts before we go into this battle? <laughs> oh my god, this is why I love you. Okay, such a smart ass. Uh, anyways, we are going to be taking on Grant. Very nervous about this battle. I feel like Giga Drain will probably help. But the thing is, it's not going to be super effective against Tyrant. Because Dragon does resist grass. I think it'll be super effective against Amorus. Um, or Aurorus. I never... Uh, Amora. I never remember those things. I never remember what ice resists. I know ice resists ice. Ice, ice, baby. Uh, are we gonna be faster? So that could be an issue. We are faster, thankfully. Um, if we get two shot this thing, I will feel very comfortable because I'm pretty sure. No, it can wake up on the turn we use our first Giga Drain, and everything has been waking up on that first turn. So this could go very badly. We get our first Giga Drain. If it does over half, oh, it's not gonna do over half. We need a two-turn sleep. This is going to put it into potion range, too, which is something I'm definitely... I'm going to try to actually play around that. I'm going to go for Psybeam, hoping that this puts it above potion range um, to the point... And, and we need it to sleep for just one more turn. And I feel like we'll be in a decent position. I, I would go for Struggle Bug, but I feel like Struggle Bug might put it down into potion range. Oh, no. It woke up, and it went for Rock Tomb. It did get the two-turn wake up. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, me and Blue will see you back here in a second as we try to take on the gym once again. We are going to beat this gym today. Blue promised us. So, Blue, as we get back into this battle, um, I want to get your opinion on something. That in episode... I think it was episode 8, the one before you guys start on, where we uh, pretty much had a little rage quit. A lot of people were suggesting uh, one thing I should go do is grinding and they were saying I should get up to at least level 30 and while I do think that would help with this gym especially with like uh, killing things a lot faster um, well before I, I give my opinion I'd love to hear what your opinion on that would be are you kidding me I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you there blue but are you freaking kidding me Ugh. Okay, I, I'm sorry for interrupting you there. That was very rude of me. Um, simply just, I got caught up in the heat in a moment, and that was very unprofessional, and we did have to get back here, and I didn't want to go through the very long haul of getting back here. So please, uh, back to the question at hand, what exactly is your opinion on grinding up for this gym? Uh, possibly up to level 30, if not higher. Okay, okay, see, I agree with you. I think that grinding up to that high of a level um, will definitely have negative effects because while it will make this gym substantially easier, oh no, oh, I really hope that isn't potion range. Oh, please don't be potion range. Oh, god damn it. Why would we get a crit? Why would good luck happen to me? Because now he's gonna wake up. Maybe, maybe he just won't go for Rock Tomb. That's a possibility. We'll get back to that topic in a moment. I apologize for, for quickly changing. Okay. That was just... I can't believe good luck. Good luck. Messed us up. Luckily for us, I just realized there's this thing called soft resetting. And since we're not losing any experience or anything, um, it definitely saves up time. Because it was taking like almost two minutes, it felt like, to 
finish the fainting animation, heal up the Pokemon Center, walk all the way back up here. Uh, especially getting through this gym is very, very time consuming, so self resetting, definitely gonna save time. But, um, as we were talking about, I do completely agree with your opinion on um, level grinding. I feel like if we went up to level 30 or so, or even if higher than that, it would help with this gym. It would make this gym substantially easier, but it would have effects on the entire rest of the series because then the rest of the series would be over leveled because the next gyms is roughly level 30, 29 to 32, their Pokemon, and by the time we got there, we would probably be close to level 40. Um, and it, it would just be a gradual thing where the entire rest of the series, we would be overleveled and remove the challenge of it just so that we can get through this one part of the game. So, um, I'm more with the idea of Giga Drain definitely helped. Giga Drain is, is definitely helping so much. Uh, having that move that is super effective on rock types, um, and it isn't... <sighs> is it super overpowered? Um... Because, you know, it's only, it's only 75 base power, and I didn't have to come to a decision to get rid of Gust. Because when I realized Gust is only 40 base power, so with Stab, Gust is weaker than Giga Drain, and um, super effective, it's like 100 base power or so, which is weaker than a super effective Giga Drain. Um, so it, it, it does suck getting rid of the, um, the type effectiveness against Bug type, because I think we had all the other types covered that Flying hits. We have Grass covered with Bug. We have uh, Fighting covered with Psychic, so it, it does suck that we won't be able to hit Bugs super effectively, but Bugs are also um, such a small... Uh, they don't have a huge effect on the type, and a lot of Bugs do have dual types, like a lot of Bugs are Poison types, which would be hit by Psychic type moves. Um, a lot of Bugs are... There's like some Grass Bug moves, or uh, Pokemon, like Parasect, who would be neutral to Bug Buzz. Uh, there's, there's just ways around that, so bugs are really the only thing that are kind of scaring me at the moment. I don't know if there's any other type that isn't hit, uh, that like resists this core of three moves. So I think we're in a pretty decent position right now. Also, I think this Giga Drain, can I risk it? I'm going to go for a Struggle Bug. I'm curious to see how much Struggle Bug does. Hopefully it doesn't put you in a potion range. I think we're in a good position. Giga Drain... Thank you, Blue. I, I didn't want to curse there, so I appreciate you taking over that role for me. You know a strategy I thought of that could theoretically work um, is protect. Like, if we could correctly predict the turn that this thing is going to wake up, we could protect on it. And then um, the next turn put it back to sleep. The thing is, though, my luck is so bad that when I do actually have protect on it, it would probably sleep longer. Thunder Wave, okay. Um, that's not the, it's not a kill. If you don't rock to me here, which there's no reason why you wouldn't rock to me. Takedown, that is going to be super effective. And that is going to one shot, okay. Yeah. At least it wasn't rock to him, right? You know? In this gym, I, I swear there's something rigged with the AI in this gym. Where they, if we had anybody sleep more than two turns... I think every Pokemon has woken up by the third turn. And that just completely confuses me. Like, it doesn't seem... It's statistically very, very illogical. Like, I remember back when I was doing a Forest Sky Nuzlocke. I don't know, if you seen my Forest Sky Nuzlocke? It was quite a good series, wasn't it? I enjoyed that one. Uh, but in that Forest Sky Nuzlocke, I, if you remember, I was facing a gym, an Ice-type gym in there. And one of my Pokemon got frozen. I bet he's going to wake up. I bet he's going to wake up and he's probably going to kill me. No, okay, well, then I guarantee he's going to wake up on this next turn. Guaranteed to happen. 100 out of 100 tants. There's no way. These Pokemon can't sleep past two turns. It just doesn't happen. What do you think? You want to bet? Guess, guess who just won to bet? <clears throat> yeah. You know what kind of sucks knowing? We literally just need this thing to stay asleep for three turns. That is all we need is for this turn, plus two more turns. We just need to sleep asleep for two more turns, and Amora is dead. That's really, just really depressing to know, that there's a chance it could sleep four turns. We just need three. We just need two of those. We just need this next turn. If it stays asleep this next turn, and we don't somehow get some crazy crit here, we win. That's 
very frustrating to know that we are this close. Oh my god! This is gonna be it! This is the opportunity, this is the chance. He's not in hyper potion range. Oh! I know, right? We did it! Oh my god! And I just remember he's still got another Pokemon. I was just thinking, what are we gonna do with this other Pokemon? Tyron, I believe, is it might outspeed us. We outspeed it, we put it to sleep. Okay, I gotta think this through here. It doesn't resist bug. I know that much. It Giga Drain will be neutral. I feel like Struggle Bug will be the better move here. Struggle Bug is 55 base power. Or is it 50? I got I gotta do some quick thinking here. Um is it 50 or 55? Because if it's 50, it's the same base power after stab as Giga Drain. It's 50. Okay, so it's going to be the same power as Giga Drain because of stab. I feel like... I also just realized Giga Drain wasn't... Was Giga Drain super effective that, that entire time against Samora? I wasn't even paying attention. Uh, I feel like Struggle Bug might be the better move. If this could somehow be a two-hit KO... Oh my god. Oh my god. If there's some chance... I think this might be a 3-hit KO. If we get a crit... I think this is a 3-hit KO. Stay asleep! Stay asleep! Is this... This is gonna kill. This is gonna kill. And it only took 29 minutes. <sighs> we beat the gym. And it's all because of you. Your emotional support, Blue. Oh, stop. Okay, let me compliment you. Your emotional support was absolutely amazing. I don't think I could have got through this. I don't think mentally I could have gotten through this. I know I'm already kind of insane right now um, without you. And I need to say thank you. I don't know. I don't think you know how much I appreciate you being here for this video with me when I very, very desperately needed your help. But, with the gym out of the way, and will you please stop talking, I never want to see your face again, Grant. You and your weird... What? What is up with his hair? I think he... Do you have any idea? <laughs> oh, that's a good theory. That's a good theory. Um, I'm not sure. It always reminds me of what's like a Candy Rocks. Which, um, have you ever drank Candy Rocks? I, or Pop Rocks. Pop Rocks. And then immediately drink soda. Freaking wild experience, man. You should definitely try it sometime. Oof. But, um, is this the Quick Claw? I feel like this is the Quick Claw. Oh, it's the next defense. Never mind. Completely useless. But, um, with the gym finally out of the way, that is going to actually do it for us today. So, I would like to once again thank my partner in crime, Blue, for joining me for this video. I don't know if you'll be back in the future. It depends on if people want to see more of you, which I would definitely be okay with that. I had a load of fun talking to you today. Um, hey guys, I wanted to do a quick little discussion with you guys really quick. Uh, for those of you who, this isn't just about me, this is for anybody on YouTube you like. Um, the easiest, single easiest way in the entire world to support a YouTuber you like is to share the video with uh, your friends. Like, liking the video and having it tweet out on Twitter is great. I've found a lot of people through that when I see people I follow tweet videos. But, like, the single absolute best way you can ever support a YouTuber is um, word of mouth. Like, go to your friends and say, hey, you like Pokemon? Here's a really incredibly stupid funny video. You might enjoy it. That is, word of mouth is the single most popular tool on YouTube. So, keep that in mind for any YouTuber you like. If you think they deserve more recognition, go out of your way to help them out. Basically, that's all I gotta say. Um, but for Blue... Better outro than I'll ever have. <laughs> and for myself, I'm already telling you, thank you guys for watching. I'll let you do it. I'll let you do it. Oh yeah.